We are nestled in the mighty San Gabriel Mountains at the world-famous Rose Bowl, where today, ABC Sports College Football presents a Pac-10 yeah. clash between the defending conference champs from Eugene, Oregon, and the UCLA Bruins. UCLA won the toss and has decided to defer. That's Ricky Whittle back for the kickoff. And as usual, Greg Andrzejczyk kicks it into the end zone, as he did all last week against BYU. So, we get a look at this Oregon offense first. A look at the starting quarterback, Tony Graziani. Graziani, 6'2", 188 pounds. He's a junior. Missed last week's game because of that injury we talked about earlier. A look at his numbers, 322 yards, Todd. He's a, tough, he's a tough kid, and, and the team has really rallied around him. He only played a little bit last year, but played well every time he's been on the field for the Ducks. Graziani back to pass on first and ten. He's got good mobility. He can hurt you that way if you're not careful, and he runs out of bounds at the 22-yard line. A look now at the Chile starting lineups, the backs and receivers. Ricky Whittle, the versatile running back. The tailback for the Ducks. Jelks getting the start at the fullback spot this week. Time. Yeah, Whittle really is a guy who can hurt you inside or outside. He's tough enough to get the inside yards, but has the speed to break the long run anytime. Matt Johnson getting the start in place of Kristen McLemore. There's a close up look at Ricky Whittle, 5'10 senior. Second down, eight to go. The handoff is to the fullback this time, up the middle to the 24-yard line. Jelks running behind that big, strong, seasoned offensive line. Wiggins, Reed, Greg, Malapai, and Weber. Malapai, uh, he's a big load, isn't he, Tom? Yeah, he really is. And, you know, he's the biggest duck, 340 pounds, but he's got very nimble feet. A guy that big, he's got great athletic skills, can pull out and lead those sweeps very effectively. Third down and five, three wideouts for the Ducks. And their first possession of the ball game. Graziani back to pass. A little bit of contact, but no flag at the 30-yard line. Incomplete intended for Josh Wilcox, their big, strong tight end. And the UCLA Bruin defense holds on the first series of the game. Nice job by Ted and Wokey, the strong safety. He was matched up man for man on the tight end, Josh Wilcox, and that was where Graziani was trying to go for the first down. Excellent job by Wokey on the coverage. Paul Guidry among the national leaders in punt return yardage. Josh Bidwell standing on his own 10-yard line for Oregon. Gidry on his 40. So you would think the Bruins would get good field position after this punt. The kicking game has been an adventure for Oregon. And I'm flattering them when I say that. They get a fortuitous bounce down to the 33-yard line. And that's where the Bruins will take over. Lamont Woods downing the ball. A 42-yard punt. About 10 of those yards coming on rolls. Just underway here at the Rose Bowl. Zeros on the scoreboard, 14-02 remaining in the first quarter. And there's a look at Cade McNown, true freshman quarterback for UCLA. Last week, 9 of 18 for 91 yards in a victory against BYU. He performed in relief. And here's a look at Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, formerly Sharman Shaw of the UCLA Bruins. Look at the Chile starting lineup for the UCLA Bruins. Kevin Jordan, their All-American wide receiver, coming into this game, Todd, with uh, some question marks about his health. Well, he's ha he had 73 catches last year, but he hurt his knee in the USC game, had off-season surgery, and he is not really back 100%. Still their main guy, but not 100%. A quick three-step drop complete at the 44-yard line to the guy we were just talking about, Kevin Jordan, out of Beltsville, Maryland. And that will be, or close to, a UCLA first down. Kenny Wheaton providing the coverage, one of the corners for Oregon. They're going to measure this, but that's a, a good, safe kind of play for McNown to get him off to a good start. Take a look at the ISO, working on Kenny Wheaton. We mentioned the great corner play between Wheaton and Alex Molden for Oregon. They will challenge these receivers all day, but you throw the little quick three-step drop pass, get your young quarterback with an early completion in the game, get his confidence built up right away. And it is a Bruin first down. So they move the ball on their first possession. A look at the offensive line for the UCLA Bruins. 
Mike Flanagan, the guy who is really impressive when you watch him perform. Well, Jonathan Ogden, the left tackle, is an NFL first rounder. Mike Flanagan, the center, really has quick feet. They use him a lot, pulling out in front of sweeps. You don't see many centers in the country leading on sweep plays. Two tights and two wideouts. Play action, McNown to pass on the waggle. Completes it to the tight end, Brian Richards, and he is going to gain about seven yards on first and ten. Nice looking play that time by UCLA. A pickup of nine. It'll be second down and one. A look up front at Gang Green, Bailey, Jackson, and Schmidt. No real overpowering guys on that defensive front of Oregon. They all play well within the system. A bunch of overachieving type guys. But the key to the Oregon defense, their ability to play as an 11-man unit. And they have seven returning starters from a year ago defensively. Second down. This is Jabbar, and Jabbar has another UCLA first down at the 43-yard line. Now, one of the strengths, Todd, of this Oregon defensive unit are their linebackers. Yeah, the two inside guys are, are really good complements for each other. Rich Rule, real tough inside guy, holds his position. Jeremy Asher, he's more the active guy, has great speed, flies around a lot, makes a lot of plays, both over 100 tackles a year ago. First down and 10. Freshman quarterback Cade McNown leading the way for UCLA. There's Jabbar again running with authority between the tackles that time, plowing his way down to the 40-yard line, picking up about three yards. A look at the seasoned and very skilled defensive backfield for Oregon. Molden on the corner, one of the best in the conference. Mark, this last play is exactly what defensive coordinator Charlie Waters was fearful of, and that was UCLA lining up at two tight ends and just pushing the, their defensive line off the ball. And, and UCLA has the great offensive line, and so far in this ball game, one back, two tight ends are really trying to punish this front four or front three of Oregon. This is Jabbar again, cutting it back against the grain. A late flag may have been a face mask. And Jabbar is brought down at the 33-yard line by Kenny Wheaton. There's a flag down at the 35. May have been a clip. Yeah, they're going to get Kevin Jordan, I think, for the clip on Kenny Wheaton. Wheaton, the cornerback, is a, is a great football player. As you take a look at it again, it's a cutback run, a design cutback as Jabbar breaks it back. Now, right there in the top of your screen, there it was, the cutback block on Kenny Wheaton. Wheaton is a guy who has a great feel for the game. He makes big plays. He was not a starter last year, Mark, but he made more big plays per amount of downs that he was on the field than anyone else on the football team. Todd, let's take a look at some of the keys for the victories for the respective teams today. Well, I think this, the, the game comes down to uh, UCLA's pass defense bar, against Oregon's run yards, defense. Yeah, Turnover yeah. margin. UCLA has done a great job of that this year. And is there an advantage in the special team? Play action. McNown looking up top. And he overthrows Kevin Jordan at the five-yard line. Good coverage that time by Molden. We talked about the corners for Oregon. Alex Molden and Kenny Wheaton. Molden really the, the prototype. He has the great speed and explosiveness. You need two things to be a great corner, I think. You need to have supreme confidence in yourself and suffer from short-term memory loss because <laughs> you've got to be able to put bad plays away. Last week, Molden was beat for a touchdown. Early in that ball game against Illinois, he shook it off and shut down uh, Jason Dulick the rest of the football game. Attitude, a big key when you're playing that position. Six DBs in now for the Ducks. Little dime package defensively on third and 17. Almost, yes, it is picked off. Kenny Wheaton has the interception for Oregon. They had two shots at the pick and got it on the second one. Not sure where or who McNown was trying to find, but he threw it right into traffic. Take a look from the end zone now. The dime defense is really the strength of Oregon. McNown has good protection, but he threw it with too much lead. Trying to throw to the in route, too much lead to his receiver. Figueres got the tip, and Wheaton again with another big play for this Oregon defense. He knows how to get to the football, and he makes big plays game in and game out. And Figueres right around the ball again with a big play. Last week he won it against Illinois for Oregon with a big hit and fumble recovery in the end zone. The pass complete to Pat Johnson that time. And an Oregon first down at the Bruin 42-yard line, a pickup of 20 yards. Pat Johnson with speed to burn.
Yeah, nice combination route. Two receivers to the same side. They sent the one receiver deep. Johnson broke it to the outside, and you could see the strong safety Wokey late in getting over for coverage. Nice job using the two receivers, running one deep, running the other to the sideline. Good looking ball thrown that time by Graziani. Now trips right formation this time for Oregon. Single back set. In the flat to Ricky Whittle, complete. He runs up out of bounds at the three one yard line. Tommy Bennett, linebacker, pushing him out of bounds. Ricky Whittle showing you some of his versatility. Strong runner and also a good receiver. Real different look that time. Three wide receivers, and what they put all the receivers over to the one side, and then they take the tight end here, Wilcox, and come off and also go off with the back. It's a little option route to the tailback. They try to fool the defense by sending all the wide receivers one side, run an option out to the back. Backs are split. This is Whittle trying to get to the corner. Got part of the way there and is hauled down at the 38-yard line by Paul Gidry, the junior cornerback for UCLA. Ricky Whittle says, Todd, that if I get a game of over 150 yards rushing, I'm uh, going to buy my offensive lineman a free meal. That can be expensive. Ricky Whittle is really a talented running back. You know, he split time last year with Dino Filio, and he really, I don't think he had a chance to really emerge. I think this year being the feature back, Whittle is really going to have an outstanding season for the Ducks. Todd Arkansas with a big, big win for Danny Ford in his crew against Alabama. Quick drop, pass complete to Pat Johnson. Johnson, who I was talking about just moments ago, possessing fantastic speed, finished eighth in the NCAA men's 100 meter final. He's actually a better 400 meter runner. Nice little pick play. Everybody has their own version of the pick play. That time Oregon in with a two tight end package. They ran a little pick inside and outside receiver and sprung Johnson for the easy first down. Did you say pick? That's illegal, isn't it? <laughs> Johnson with two receptions, a total of 28 yards. 10-11 remaining in the first quarter. Oregon on its second possession of the ball game. The draw. This is Jelts. Jelts lowering his hat and powering his way down to the 19-yard line. And he's close to another Oregon first down. A tackle made by Wokey. Jelts getting a promotion this week, getting the start at fullback. Here's Tossi Malapai, the, the big offensive guard, 340 pounds. Watch as they run the draw right behind Tossi. Nice little, takes his man all the way to the inside, right past the runner. A.J. Jelts, 240-pound fullback. you got to give that fullback the ball a couple times, so he'll keep blocking for Whittle. There he is again, and he got popped at the 18-yard line that time. Good fill that time by the linebacking crew for UCLA. Let's take a look at that UCLA defense. Up front, Ward, Kershke, Stretz, and Vi Tata. They need to get a little bit of pressure, Todd, you would think, on Graziani. Yeah, their front four rush has been very average when we talked to Coach Bob Field, the defensive coordinator. He said it wasn't that impressive, but the linebacker's really strong. You've got Donnie Edwards moved into the middle last week against BYU. He is an electrifying player. We have a player shaken up down on the field for the Bruins. We'll get more on that injury when we come back. Well, the player shaken up for the UCLA Bruins uh, and still down at the 17-yard line is Donnie Edwards, the All-American candidate and the Butkus candidate as well, an impact player for that squad. We'll take a look at this play again. Edwards is right here, the middle linebacker. They put him in that position so he can run both sides of the field and make plays. He's going to make a terrific hit on the fullback, Jelk. Watch him read the play. And he kind of goes in there head first. Now, Jelks is a 245-pound guy. That's a lot of shock right there on that kind of a hit. Another shot of it. You can see a good tackle by Edwards, but he led with his head. And the good news is he's walking off the field. And that's, that's good for him, and it's good for UCLA because he is an impact player uh, for this UCLA defense. Yeah, Donnie Edwards, one of the real first leaders, was first telling first. us a couple of days ago when we saw him at practice, he weighed 180 pounds when he first came into the program. Now a very ripped 234. Split backs. Two wide receivers out for the Ducks. The give is to Jelts, getting a lot of work and has a lot of real estate ahead of him. Touchdown, Oregon. A.J. Jelts finding the end zone. An 18-yard scamper for the touchdown. 
Nice job mixing up the play so far by offensive coordinator Al Borges. The counter trap, the guard kicks out, the tackle leads through and seals off the inside linebacker, and A.J. Jelks takes it to the end zone. Brian Wilmer in there at the middle linebacker right now for Donnie Edwards. He got blocked to the inside by the tackle, and a nice job by Jelks finding the end zone. Now they're kicking game, Todd, as I mentioned earlier, a big question mark. Joshua Smith in for the extra point. And he knocks it through. So the defending Pac-10 champs looking for respect, earning a measure of it right here. They lead 7-0. Oregon's offense continued to move the ball. With two minutes, 46 seconds in the first quarter, quarterback Tony Graziani connected on a 22-yard touchdown pass to tight end Josh Wilcox to make the score 14-0 Ducks. UCLA got on the board when place kicker Bjorn Merton nailed an 18-yard field goal through the uprights, making the score 14-3 with 12-51 remaining in the second quarter. Oregon proved why they were 1994 Pac-10 champions when speedster Ricky Whittle scampered 11 yards for a touchdown with 5 minutes 20 seconds left to play in the half, increasing the University of Oregon's lead to 21-3. But UCLA was not about to lie down. With 2.27 left in the second quarter, backup quarterback Rob Walker went deep to Derek Ayers for a 41-yard touchdown bomb, making the score 21-10, Ducks over the Bruins. When we return to the action, Oregon will have the ball first down at midfield and 32 seconds remaining in the half, right here on ESPN Classic. Hey, Oregon can get a score on the board with 32 seconds to play here in the first half. Ball on the 50-yard line, first down. Graziani passing, complete. McLemore steps out of bounds, first down, stopping the clock. You know, the one problem, though, that, that we haven't really addressed is Matt Belden last year was the, was the starting punter and kicker for Oregon. He hurt his, his leg in the opening game. He, he pulled a thigh muscle. As you take a look at the catch by McLemore at the end of the play, but he yard pulled yard. a thigh muscle in the opening game against Utah, and he's been replaced by three very untested guys. Right now you got Josh Bidwell, the punter. You've got Joshua Smith as the kicker who was, uh, wasn't even supposed to be in school for another week. But he is the starting kicker now for the Ducks. He may get a chance to kick one here. The pass complete to the near sideline to Pat Johnson, who made a key play on that punt return, and the clock stops as he gets out of bounds. 21 seconds to play in the ball game in the first half. Back to that kicking story for Oregon. You said he wasn't supposed to be in school, uh, right. Smith, for another month. He won the job. After Bellani bet him 100 push-ups, he could make a 45-yard field goal during the audition. And, uh, you know, he says that the coach still owes him a few push-ups. <laughs> That's Johnson in motion. Three wideouts for the Ducks. As he ended the pass on the screen, they set it up to Whittle. Makes a nice move and gets out of bounds at the 21-yard line. Good clock management by the Ducks. Uh, yeah, really good work by Whittle. First to avoid the tackle by Sean Williams, the free safety, and then knowing to get out of bounds as you take a look at Joshua Smith. And to follow up on that, you know, last week they used three kickers to replace one. They used Bidwell as a punter. They used Joshua Smith as the kick, the place kicker, and they used Matt Brewer as the kickoff. But in the way game, Pac-10 rules say you can only travel 60 players. So they left Brewer and Eugene, and this is the first game that Joshua Smith is acting as both the place kicker and the kickoff guy. So that's that's really kind of a, an untested uh, part of this of this Oregon football team. Looks like we're going to get a chance to see Smith here right at the end of the half. Graziani may take a shot at the end zone before that. The junior under pressure, stepping up. Time winding down into the end zone, incomplete intended for McLemore. Pretty much threw that one away. Five seconds to go now in the first half. Good decision by Graziani. That's the kind of throw you make that, that you give your guy a chance and no one else. If he can make the catch in the back corner of the end zone, great. If not, you bring your field goal kicker on and let him make a try. And here comes Josh Smith with his first field goal attempt of his collegiate That's career. He was sitting at home on the couch with his folks watching television when the Oregon coaches called him and said, uh, how'd you like to come to school now? This is coming out of the hold of the backup quarterback, Ryan Perry Smith. A field goal from 39 yards out. And it's good. He nails it. 
The first of his career is a good one. And Oregon takes a 24 to 10 lead into the locker room at halftime, silencing this crowd at the Rose Bowl. The UCLA Bruins, meanwhile, have to be concerned about their offensive execution. And Dean Blevins had an opportunity to catch up with their offensive coordinator. Dean? And uh, Cade McNown will be the starting quarterback in the third period. He said that his quarterback was a little bit rattled, moving a little too fast. And Todd, you can relate. When you get that first start, I don't care how prepared you are and how good you are, sometimes you're just in fast motion. You got to slow it down a little bit. That's what Toledo's concerned with. They're going back with Cade now. All right. I think it was a good move, really. And you could see Terry Donahue just kind of take him aside and help him watch the plays. And, uh, and, and I think we'll see a, a much more relaxed Cade McNown in the second half. And McElroy is not going to let anybody relax. He puts the pressure on the Oregon special teams, running it out to the 46-yard line, giving the Bruins good field position, a 36-yard kickoff return. The tackle made by Woods. Look back at our game stories, Tom. Well, you can see UCLA's pass defense. They gave up 129 yards. The best news for Oregon, they stopped the running game in that first half, only 95 yards. Turnovers, UCLA usually had been strong this year. They're on the downside of that in this ball game, and special teams, Starting field position for Oregon, the 39, UCLA their own 28, but a big play, a second big kickoff return in this ball game by McElroy right now gives UCLA great starting position here to start the third period. And Todd, we have an injured Bruin player down on the field, a picture that Terry Donahue has seen far too often in the 1995 season. And we'll get a report hopefully from Dean in a few moments on that injury and the severity of it. But the Bruins, there's a look at it. It's Vi Tata, the injured player down in the field. A look at the first half possessions for UCLA. It's very much unproductive. And, you know, as we look at Tata down on the field for the Bruins, he would be the second Bruin player to be, you know, injured today. I mean, yeah. Donnie Edwards, uh, their starting All-American inside linebacker, has not played since the first couple of series of the game. And uh, we don't know whether he'll be able to return or not yet either. So a couple of impact players bitten by the injury bug today. Well, they can ill afford to lose Vi Tata because they, they already have replaced him in the starting lineup for Dan Juan McGee, who was the starting defensive end. He's out with a knee injury, didn't even practice this week. So Tata is the backup that is in the starting role now. So if he can't go again, uh, UCLA will be searching for some people on that defensive line. Well, back comes the freshman, Cade McNown, at quarterback. He's 5 of 13 for 34 yards and one interception in the first half. That's Jordan in motion. The handoff is to Abdul Jabbar, running with authority near a first down at the 45 yard line. Abdul Jabbar close to cracking 100 yards on the afternoon, and he just did it on that run. He has 108 after that nine-yard pickup, the tackle made by Jensen and Asher. Dating back to last year, that's his sixth consecutive 100-yard game. He finished the season last year with three consecutive, and now the, to open the 95 campaign, three straight 100-yard games. He is a, a talented running back. Out of the ace formation, Jabbar again on second and short, gets the first down. You know, you look at the type of depth that they have, we haven't talked that much about Skip Hicks, who led the team in rushing as a freshman, was injured last year, made a miraculous comeback in a matter of months after major knee surgery, and he is uh, pretty much close to being ready to play right now, too. Yeah, he got to practice three days. He, he tore his ACL before last year, battled back, and then he, he got hurt right before fall camp started with it and had to get scope surgery. So he's fighting his way back, so they're, they're really limited when they're tailback position right now. And Massey is the tailback, and he gets the carry here. Massey, a 5'10", 185-pound junior. Check that. That was James Milliner who got the call. A&M big time over Tulsa. A&M facing a, an important matchup soon against Colorado. And you'll see on ABC in the upset special of the day. Upset du jour, Arkansas over Alabama. Well, Alabama was kind of flirting with it the last couple yeah. of weeks. They really snuck one out against Vanderbilt a couple of weeks ago. And so uh, they are not playing great football right now. And Arkansas took advantage of it. Two tights and two wideouts. Single back set for McNown. Out of the option. Keeps it himself. Won't go down, but down. 
goes down at the 33 yard line. Tackled by Jeremy Asher. Good call again by Bob Toledo. The man-to-man -man tendencies that Oregon's defense likes to play, run the option. Maybe you get one guy blocked and you can turn the corner. That time McNown was able to option the end man on the line of scrimmage and put his team in a nice third down in a yard and a half, two yard situation. You know, McNown isn't your typical quarterback uh, cream puff. Nothing no. <laughs> personal, Todd. He threw the discus 142 feet, 48 foot shot putter and a 50 foot pole vaulter in high school. So. He does have uh, that athletic ability. Jabbar back in the game at tailback. Running hard, his forward progress will take him to the 28-yard line, and that's another Bruin first down. Good situation right now after another nice first down by UCLA. Maybe they try to go for a big play. Might be a good situation to try to run a reverse or a play-action pass for a long touchdown. Watch Jeremy Asher on the replay. Gets blocked off in there. Nice job on the inside. Chad Overhauser, the right guard, gets a good block on Asher and an easy first down for Abdul Jabbar. But a good opportunity right here to go for a big play. The Bruins on their first possession of the second half. Jabbar trashed at the 32 yard line by Troy Bailey. A really knife through the hole to make the stop behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of about two yards on the play. Bailey, one of those real overachievers. Yeah, that's a big play by Bailey because it makes it second down and 12. Now Oregon substitutes into their dime defense. Now they've come in with their, their extra pass defender. So a tough situation for UCLA going against this dime defense on second and long. McElroy split to the top of your screen. Jordan to the bottom. Movement and a flag. There was movement on the right side of the defensive line. Bailey giveth and he taketh away. <laughs> he made a big play the play before. That time he jumped offside. Prior to the snap, dead ball. Contact by the defense. Off it. Five yards. Second down. Watch the top of your screen. Bailey going on the quarterback's voice, not the movement of the football. And again, alert play by the center, Mike Flanagan. He saw the offsides and snapped the ball to his quarterback. Second time we've seen the Bruins do that to Oregon today. 11 and a half to play in the third quarter. On the counter tray, Milliner brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Jeremy Asher, yes, he is underrated. Yes, he does have skills. He can play 18 tackles a week ago against Illinois. A tackle for loss there. That was a great read again, but making the quick read. Asher, watch him on the right side of your screen. As soon as he reads the counter trap, he runs right behind the pulling tackle, Jonathan Ogden. Nobody was there to make a block on him and a tackle behind the line of scrimmage. He read the pulling guard and tackle and shot in there for the big play. Third down and long, third and 12. The type of situations that Oregon defensively loves. McNown scrambling under pressure and thrown out of bounds at the 31-yard line, so they respond once again, Oregon does, on third down situations. I can't stress to you enough uh, how good this Oregon defense is in definite passing situations. They're not a big defense, they're not a, an overpowering defense, but when they can put you into situations where they can give you the different looks and they can play the dime defense, they are as good as anybody there is in the country. They, they really create a lot of confusion with the looks and the things that they can do with their dime defense. Sailor into punt, Todd. Uh, maybe not quite in the field goal range of Baron Merton. It'd be about a 50-yard field goal if they elected to go for it. Sailor will try and pooch this one or aim for the coffin corner. And he gets it. It's out of bounds at the two-yard line. Precision on the part of Chris Saylor. 24-10, we'll be right back. Take a look at the first half possessions of Oregon. Pretty much every other one, they did something good. The only one that stands out, that fumble right there. That was the, the only really mistake that Oregon had offensively. Good execution and protecting the football. Graziani starting the offense on the two-yard line. You know, Graziani has said from time to time that one of the inspirations for him was Danny O'Neill, the former quarterback at Oregon, and uh, he still occasionally talks to O'Neill and takes some tutoring from him and talks about certain situations, and the two of them really shared a very special friendship while they were both in Eugene. 
Danny O'Neill, a very productive four-year starter for Oregon. That's why Graziani has not had much playing experience because Danny O'Neill started for four years, and he went through the hard times and, and was able to experience some of the good times at the end of his career. Good tradition of quarterbacks at the University of Oregon. That's Whittle. Fumble, and the Bruins have it. Whittle put it on the ground, and UCLA got some room service at the three-yard line. When UCLA plays good defense, they force turnovers. That's what they did in 93 when they went to the Rose Bowl. They dropped off on that last year, but they're doing it again this year. Ricky Whittle had two fumbles last week that cost his team both times. Again, nowhere to go on the run. Looks like he has the ball covered pretty well, but a nice job by Philip Ward, number 97, comes in and makes the tackle and with that big right arm just stripped the ball out. Travis Kersky came away with the football, but Philip Ward is the guy who stripped it out. And great field position now for the Bruins. UCLA in their hippo package, their hippo formation. Jabbar gets the call. Tough yardage down to the three. Gained about one on that play. Good, choice, good place right here for the option, I think, Mark. Again, the man-to-man -man tendencies of, of Oregon and the expectation that they're going to crash in to try to stop the run to Jabbar. This is a good place for them to come out wide on the option with Cade McNown. McNown will never be mistaken for a Tommy Frazier on the option, but he does have good option skills. He has decent speed. Yeah, he's a good athlete, and, and he's got good awareness on the football field. Second and goal for the Bruins. Here's the option, McNown fighting hard. Does he get in? Still no signal, still waiting. And they're gonna mark. Touchdown Bruins. Better late than never if you're a Bruin fan. Yeah, a late signal. It looked to me from up here that he made it. Watch Cade McNown, they come with the option away from their two tight end strength. Down to the end of the line, gets a good block by the backup tight end, Jamal Clark, number 96, and then good strength and effort by Cade McNown gets the ball into the end zone. Freshman quarterback out of West Lynn, Oregon, holding Oregon player of the year up there. Finding the end zone for the Bruins. Merton in for the extra point, and it's a 24 to 17 ball game. You couldn't have written a better Hollywood script for the Bruins in the third quarter. They score on their second possession. One touchdown separates both teams. The crowd on hand here at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, nestled in the mighty San Gabriel Mountains. And, uh, started talking just moments ago about former quarterback Danny O'Neill tutoring Graziani. This is Whittle. You can sense that the Bruins are a little bit charged up. And Graziani will start the offense at the 18-yard line. But the guy who was his predecessor, Danny O'Neill, had one of his finer moments in the Rose Bowl last year. He was a smooth operator in the pocket. There you see some of his work. The touchdown pass against Penn State. Oregon playing in the Rose Bowl for the first time in a long time. And Dean Blevins is standing by with O'Neill. Yeah, it was nine months ago you set records for completion attempts and yardage. Well, I know. It, was, it seems like yesterday, and that was just a great season. It was great to be part of that team. Hang on, Danny. Let's watch this play, and we'll have a question with you. First down and 10. The waggle. Graziani almost picked off at the 37-yard line. Back to Dean. What's Graziani thinking right now? Well, right now, he's just trying to get some more points on the board. They just got the fumble here. They got some easy points, and he just wants to get the offense going, mainly the offensive line, get them going and get a nice drive right now. Danny, you had a chance to go play in the CFL, decided not to. Bring us up to date. Well, it's uh, it's exciting now. I wanted to play pro football, and that opportunity wasn't as, as good as I wanted it to be, and now I'm uh, I'm teaching high school kids the word of God. So the, the fulfillment there is just unbelievable. All right, thanks a bunch. Good luck. All right, Dean, thank you. 24 to 17, the Bruin defense gaining a little momentum here. 
And that'll slow that momentum. A nice completion to number 15, Hodge, and a first down for the Ducks. Teddy Lawrence pushing him out of bounds. That was a big play that time by, by Tony Graziani. This is an offense that, as Danny O'Neill said, really needed to make a couple plays here. A nice throw and catch, Graziani to Jabari Hodge for the first down. Pickup of 13 yards, moving the chains for Oregon. Graziani throwing for 322 yards a couple of games ago against Utah, plus a pair of touchdowns. Had a good week of practice and returning from his injury. Handed off this time. Whittle tripped up in the backfield nicely. Tackle made by Tommy Bennett, who was suspended last year and is now converted into a linebacker, former safety. Now UCLA's defensive coaches, what they... Uh, what they did was they went and spent some time with Florida State's coaches, defensive coaches this past spring. They made the switch from the 3-4 to the 4-3. And not only did they switch schemes, they switched their personnel. They took Abdul McCullough, who was the strong safety last year, Tommy Bennett, who was a defensive back, and made them both linebackers, as well as moving Donnie Edwards into the middle. So a different scheme and different personnel as well. They kicked the counter. The waggle, oh, a nice hit at the 38-yard line and a flag. It may have been interference. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good call, Mark, because Wilcox had not even made a chance to, to make a catch on the ball, and he was tackled from behind. Now, this ball was actually somewhat carelessly thrown towards the middle of the field by Graziani and, and got away with one, but I think a good call by the official. Pass interference, defense, penalty at the spot of the foul, first and ten. Take a look again on the bootleg. Good pressure again from UCLA, and he just kind of threw that high over the middle, and there's the tackle in be from behind before the ball got to him, and uh, a favorable call for Oregon, and, and probably not a great decision on where to throw the football by Graziani. Ted Wokey, the strong safety, the guilty party there. UCLA with five penalties, totaling 41 yards in the afternoon. 8.05 to play in the third period. And the UCLA defense becoming much more stingy against Ricky Whittle on the running plays. Whatever Bob Field had to say to his defense in the locker room at halftime, it worked because the front four for UCLA is taking control of the line of scrimmage so far in the third quarter. The first half, they were pretty non-existent. Oregon was able to do what they wanted offensively, but so far here in the third quarter, the front four by UCLA really putting pressure on the line of scrimmage. Travis Kersky and Grady Stretch, the two inside tackles, playing very well right now. Every guy having to pick up the intensity just a notch in the absence of the All-American Donnie Edwards. Here they come with the blitz, looking for Whittle, and it's incomplete. The Bruins coming with the dog that time. Abdul McCullough blitzing from his linebacking position. Yeah, good choice, a good decision to come with the blitz at this time. You can see Abdul McCullough right there, number nine. He's going to come unblocked. A clear shot at the quarterback, and Graziani just had to unload the ball. No chance of a completion there. The quick pressure by Abdul McCullough. And now a reverse of fortune. For the first time in a long time, Oregon facing a third and long situation. Third and 15. Graziani with time. Incomplete at midfield. Intended for Jabri Hodge. And Paul Guidry was right there, and the UCLA fans coming to their feet collectively. Two outstanding defensive series in a row for the UCLA Bruins. They caused the fumble the series previous to this. This time, excellent defense. They put him in the long yardage situation on third down and, and caused the punt situation now. Bidwell standing on his own 16-yard line. Gidry for UCLA standing on his own 33. Gidry a very dangerous punt return guy. A low snap. And it's a high spiraling kick. Gidry calling for the fair catch at the 35-yard line. Well, last time, Todd, the UCLA offense didn't have that far to go. They only had to go three yards to hit the end zone. This time, they start from 63 yards away. And this is Jabbar trying to get to the corner. He's pushed out of bounds at the 39 by Kenny Wheaton, the corner who came up and provided run support. You talked moments ago about Eddie George. I really like him, too. And uh, 
you know, with all due respect to Penn State, uh, I really think Ohio State might have a little something on them. Ohio State, I think, has has as good a team as anybody in the Big Ten, but they have a very Four difficult schedule. Of the three top teams, Michigan, Ohio State, and Penn State, they have the toughest schedule of the three, but an impressive win, it looks like, on the way for the Buckeyes right now. Ohio State taking on Pitt next oh, yeah, week. There will be, and Cade McNown runs the option once again very well and gets the first down in midfield, pushed out finally by Alex Molden. Was saying earlier that he is deceptive when he runs the ball. Good decision making that time by the freshman. See, this is a, a double option. It's not a triple option. You, you block the tight end and you just take your quarterback to the end of the line of scrimmage and, and you try to put the last guy on the line defensively for Oregon in a, in a no win situation. If he takes the pitch, the quarterback keeps it and turns it up inside. If he comes to the quarterback, he's going to pitch the ball to the tailback. Dean Blevins, what do you see? Well, guys, I think it's important to note that quarterbacks in that situation don't have to be four or five runners you can be a four seven or four eight runner not have the great speed but make the right decisions and be elusive are you trying to say you can relate to that Dean <laughs> well I wasn't a four eight runner <laughs> <laughs> Hillener with the carry out to the 46 yeah we're still debating uh, that four five that you said a little while ago uh, a couple weeks ago on our broadcast maybe one of those situations where it gets better as the years go by you know usually does revisionist history <laughs> 6.35 to play in the third quarter. UCLA trailing by seven points. They scored on their last possession, courtesy of a Ricky Whittle fumble. Right now, it's second down, six to go. Milner, the lone back. They fake the counter. McNown keeps it and is brought down and brought down hard at the 46 by number 58, Derek Barnes, the linebacker. Great play by Barnes. Great play by Derek Barnes, seeing where this was coming from. The bootleg, they pull the guard and the tackle. That's the bread and butter running play, the counter trap for UCLA. And Derek Barnes does what he's taught to do. Stay at home. Don't get beat on the backside of the play. Excellent work by Derek Barnes, not getting fooled with the play action fake. It is third down and 13 to go. You've got to get to the 40-yard line of Oregon. Where, oh, where has Kevin Jordan been this afternoon? McNown with time and runs it himself, and he's brought down to the 45-yard line. UCLA will have to punt. Reggie Jordan made the tackle. The Bruins failed to convert on third down. We've talked a lot about the third down defense of the Oregon Ducks. Excellent job downfield. Take a look as this play runs. Now six defensive backs in the ball game, and watch the coverage. None of the wide receivers for UCLA can find an opening. He's got good enough protection, but there's no open receiver. Great downfield coverage by Oregon. Oregon coming after the punt. And here's Johnson, who's done a great job on punt returns today. His heady move near the end of the first half allowed them to score that field goal on the last play of the game. A 37-yard punt, five on the return. Back in Pasadena, UCLA trailing by a touchdown. Todd, interesting that both teams featured receivers, Jordan for UCLA, Macklemore for Oregon, really uh, conspicuous by their absence so far. Yeah, and really, I think for Oregon's sake, they need Kristen Macklemore to step up and make a couple plays for this offense, particularly here in the second half. UCLA has fought and clawed their way back into the game. The momentum is swinging back to the Bruins. Macklemore has to show up for the Ducks. Yeah, turnovers very much the story, too, for both teams. Raziani handing it off to Ricky Riddle. Ricky Riddle. 4 10 remaining in the period. They fake the flanker screen. Graziani still looking. And firing. Is it complete or not? Incomplete. That was the same play they scored the touchdown on, Mark, where they faked the quick screen to McLemore and try to run the tight end by him, but well defended. Take a look again at the game stories, and the one that's standing out right now is the turnovers. UCLA back in it at 2-2. Two and two. That's why the score has evened up closer to 24-17. The turnovers all even on the ball game now. Coach Mike Bellotti in his first year as head coach. One of the biggest games of his head coaching career. Winner here would have a leg up on returning January 1st. This is McLemore. We talked about him just moments ago. He put it on the ground. But he's ruled down. 
McLemore gets it out to the 27-yard line, but he's far short of the first down. I'm telling you, the Bruin defense has been a different defense here in the second half. It's Wokey making the tackle. Certainly has, and, and really the credit goes first and foremost to the guys up front. Vi Tata, Grady Stretch, Travis Kersky, and Philip Ward. They are starting to take more control on the line of scrimmage. Two three and out series in a row for the Bruins. Now Paul Guidry would love to break one here for the Bruins. Bidwell is standing on his 15-yard line. And Oregon gets a decent bounce. Out of bounds at the 39. A 33-yard punt and nothing on the return. Just over three minutes remaining in the third quarter. UCLA still trailing by a touchdown. The Bruins lead the overall series 33 to 16, but as I mentioned, they haven't won a conference opener since 1990. I think we're going to see a reverse in this series by UCLA. They ran it for a big play against BYU a week ago. They put it in the game plan again this week to go to the opposite side. Look for Derek Ayers on a reverse in this series. And here comes Abdul Jabbar. Brought down to the 41 yard line. Abdul he gains Jabbar. two yards on the play. It'll be second down and about eight to go. The tackle made by Derek Allen. Derek Allen on the stop. A new coaching staff, and part of the co new coaching staff Eight at Oregon is uh, Charlie Waters, former, former DB for the Dallas Cowboys. Says that it's real refreshing for him yeah. at Oregon, really enjoys the atmosphere. Yeah, he you know, kind of had a rough go the last couple of years in Denver and has a similar personality to Nick Aliotti, who was a popular defensive coordinator here last year. But now keeps it on the option, reading his blockers well. That's why you got to like this freshman. He gets the first down at the 50-yard line, riding the right shoulder of his blocker before finally being brought down by Jeremy Asher and Reggie Jordan. And as Dean mentioned, you don't need great speed, a little bit of elusive ability, and the ability to make good decisions, and that's what we're seeing from Cade McNown running the option. If nobody's going to take him and make a good tackle, he'll keep the football and keep moving the chains. Good decisions on the option by Cade McNown. Not a lot of yardage there. You can see only 14 yards after you take out the sacks, but, but still effective yardage running the option. And they run it to the other side this time. They pitch it to Abdul Jabbar. Nothing happening that time as Figueres came up from his free Kareem safety Abdul spot Jabbar. and made the tackle. Figueres made that big play last week to win the game against Illinois for Oregon. And the coaches keep saying that he keeps improving. Week by week. Still thinking, they say, a bit too much, but playing time will remedy that. Only a sophomore. So with 1.53 to play now in the third quarter. It's got to be a big game for him, too, because he's from nearby Glendale, California, so a chance to probably play in front of a lot of family and friends as the starting safety for the defending uh, Rose Bowl uh, participants for the Pac-10. And here is number... 42 out, and they break it. Touchdown Bruins. Skip Hicks comes in the game. Do you believe it? Honey dip Skip. Surprise, surprise. Terry Donahue fooled everyone. Well, he said he might play, but he only had three practices. And, you know, it's remarkable that he's been able to recover from knee injuries as quickly as he has. What a return party. First run of the game. He follows a good block by Kevin Jordan. Watch the cut by Skip Hicks, the fresh legs, and the breakaway speed. The knee looks fine, Skip. Broke a tackle of Kenny Wheaton. A great run by Skip Hicks. Welcome back to the Bruin offense. <laughs> oh. Let me quote the coach on this. Did he not say that it was highly improbable, too, that he might play? It's 24 all. Old secret play number 42 out of the Bruin playbook. They gave him the option of sitting this year out, too. And Skip Hips comes back to score a touchdown and even the game. Take a look at the inside linebackers of Oregon now. Rich Rule, number 48. Curtis Martin is in there right now for Jeremy Asher. Rule overruns the play. Curtis Moore gets blocked, and Skip Hicks takes it into the end zone after breaking that last tackle by the cornerback, Kenny Wheaton. That, that's, a, that's a special play by Skip Hicks. I tell you, I was personally, folks, I, I won't lie to you, I was a little shocked that he was in the game. 
Skip Hicks, who a month ago had arthroscopic knee surgery on the same knee that he had a reconstructive surgery on a year ago. And if there's one thing that you can say about Skip Hicks is that he's resilient and he recovers very quickly. And he does a good job in, in first appearances, too. I mean, when he first came on as a freshman, his first game he gained 148 yards against Nebraska, a very good Nebraska team. Didn't play much last year, came back from the knee, and his first action of 95, just a little simple touchdown run. Makes Terry Donahue look like a genius, too. Ricky Whittle on the return. It's a tie game at 24 apiece. And Whittle's down at the 24-yard line. Skip Hicks tying the game at 24 apiece with 1.21 to play in the period. The Bruins, as we mentioned, are a second-half ball and in a huge third quarter last week against BYU, scoring 17 points. And they've come back to score 14 here. Graziani's going to pass. Going downtown. Complete at the 27-yard line to Hodge. Back at you. You want big plays? Hey, Tony Graziani says we got some stuff too. And this is an offense that desperately needed a big play. A perfect throw by Tony Graziani to Jibri Hodge. Watch the play action now. They're going to fake the counter. Roll out, he's got his lead blocker, Malapii, with him, and he's throwing back to across the field on the post pattern. You can't throw the post any better than that. It's a perfect throw on Teddy Lawrence. You see that Graziani paid for it, but I'll tell you, those don't hurt nearly as bad when you know that you made a completion downfield. That's the 10 from the 28-yard line. On the ground, down to the 23-yard line. Whittle, That's Ricky Whittle. Whittle. Larry Atkins making the tackle. Whittle, the number two rusher last year on the team, eighth on the all-time school list. And Dean Blevins has a comment. Dean? Guys, a moment ago, Coach Bellotti was upbeat meeting on the sidelines with Whittle after the fumble, More led to that Bruins touchdown. He said, hey, I need you to stay focused. We're going to give you plenty of carries. And last week, Dean, he had two fumbles against Illinois. And another one here. Flip backs. Flag down. And it's a dead ball. There's movement on the left side of the line for Oregon. They, they got a little anxious, went ahead of the snap count, and the penalty will back them up five more yards. Ball start, offense. Five yards, repeat second down. They will back this one up to the 28 yard line. Oregon with three penalties totaling 15 yards today. They've been pretty disciplined. They had over 100 yards worth of penalties in their first game against Utah, and that, as much as anything, kept Utah in that football game. They've done a much better job in their next two ball games in that category. Hodge just split to the bottom of your screen on the option. Graziani keeps it himself. He can run a little option football, too. He's down to the 23-yard line. Tackled by Kirschke. And that is the last play of the third quarter. A third quarter that was all Bruin blue and gold. We'll return with more action between Oregon and UCLA after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Right now it's time for the UCLA defense to answer the Oregon offensive surge. Whittle and Jelks split behind Graziani. Lots of scoring in this game and lots of scoring in the SEC. This is Jelks. The big fella is on the loose. Jelks with a first down at the 43-yard line. I'll tell you what, A.J. Jelks, we, we, we've talked about him a lot in this ball game. He was an inside linebacker last year. Didn't even play offense. They switched him to fullback this season, and uh, it looks to be a tremendous move by Mike Bellotti and his staff putting him into fullback. Whittle, the tailback, getting the carry this time, out to the 40-yard line. Gain of about two. There have been a litany of injuries for UCLA all season, a couple today. Dean? Well, the linebacker injury to Donnie Edwards, of course, has been the key one for the Bruins. He will not play. We'll continue to look into that to see what definitive word we can get on his injury. But we do know that Philip Ward, of course, is back out there, number 97. But he's playing with a first-degree AC separation of his right shoulder.
Mm. I don't care what letters they are. It's it's not good. Yeah, and we should mention also the starting center for Oregon, Mark Gregg, out of the ball game in street clothes right now. Kyle Straight, the backup center, has it been in for the entire second half to this point. Eight and a half minutes to play. Whittle seems to be turning into a game of ball control. Maybe now for Oregon, running it very effectively. Sean Williams, the safety, making the tackle. This Oregon team has really shown me something, Mark. I mean, they, they had a great season last year, a magical season up in Eugene, and winning the Pac-10 and going to the Rose Bowl. But And they snuck up on a lot of people last year. But I think this team is better than last year's team. And no disrespect to last year's team or Danny O'Neill or anybody, because they, they had a great season. I think this is a better overall football team than they put on the field last year. And they are certainly a team to be reckoned with in the Pac-10. And let's give credit uh, to Mike Pilati, who comes in here as the new head coach and has assembled a new staff, brought a lot of new people into the program, and they have not skipped a beat. A perfect 2-0 coming in, and Rick can go 3-0. Whittle down to the 27-yard line, tackled by Abdul McCullough. Top tackler for the Bruins after two games this season. Well, Abdul McCullough is 202 pounds, but he plays bigger than that because he's a tough kid, but that's a great block by the fullback, A.J. Jelks. Now, McCullough still gets in on the tackle, but it was about six yards or five yards down the field, so a good play by Abdul McCullough taking on the block of big A.J. Jelks. The clock now the enemy of the UCLA Bruins. 7.26 to play. A look at the total yardage for the respective teams. This is Whittle, keeping it in the middle of the field, down to the 24-yard line. Whittle. Got about three yards to go for the first down. Travis Kirschke making the tackle. And another Bruin player down on the field. That's number 27, Ted Wokey, out of Sacramento, California. He had an interception in the game last week against BYU. Four yard gain on the carry. Fatigue becoming a factor too because it is warm down there and we're going to cool out with a commercial. Well, Todd, when everyone talked about the prognostications in the Pac 10, uh, it was USC that got the cover of a certain uh, magazine, Sports right. Illustrated. Nobody talked about the Oregon Ducks, but. It's third and one now for them. If they convert this, it's going to look tough for UCLA. Yeah, one of the only guys that said, hey, don't forget Oregon or don't overlook Oregon was Terry Donahue, the head coach of UCLA. He thought they were the best team coming back. They were the defending champions, and they're still champions until someone beats them. Split backs. Jelks the fullback. Whittle the tailback. Graziani keeps it and throws it to Jelks. Did he make it? I'm not sure. I don't think so. We'll wait and see, though. Jelks met right away by Abdul McCullough. That's a terrific play by Abdul McCullough. We talked about how he plays bigger than his program weight of 202 pounds, and that time he took on the bigger fullback, A.J. Jelks, and just stopped him dead in his tracks with the tackle. He tried to go at the play action pass and get the first down. It's going to be awful close, but Take nothing away from the play that McCullough made in the open field. Ready? UCLA holding on third down. Graziani is still in the ball game. Fourth down and sure. What this do you do? The, this is the difference between having a head coach who is a former offensive coordinator and one who is a former defensive coordinator. Fourth and one, this point in the ball game, you can ice the ball game with getting another touchdown or some more points. And Mike Bellotti has said we're going for it on fourth down. Now, keep aware, they may just try to go with a long count and try to draw UCLA offsides and get the easy first down. Let's watch and see if Graziani tries to go with the long, hard count, maybe even use some motion to distract the UCLA defense. This is it. And they put it on the ground. Miscommunication. The Bruins say they have it. 
Well, even if they don't have the fumble, they're not going to get the first down. And we mentioned Kyle Strait, the backup center, is in the ball game. It was a bad snap, a fumbled snap, and UCLA comes away with it. Grady Stretz on the bottom of the pile comes out with the football. An egregious error at the worst time for Oregon's offense, Todd. Take a look now. Here's the football right there. You see it's on the ground right now. It never got cleanly exchanged between Kyle Strait and the quarterback Graziani, and another turnover and a big play for the Bruin defense. That's the third turnover of the day for Oregon. You can see when you're a quarterback and you put your hands in here, you want that snap to come up and hit your top hand. For Graziani, it would be his left hand. You want it to pop up into the top hand. There was no pop on that snap. It was not a clean exchange. Here's Jabbar trying the right side. Gaining Three about two yards. yards. That huge side came from all these UCLA fans. We should mention, too, Mark Cade McNown it played his senior year of high school at West Lynn High School up in Oregon. And he was recruited by Oregon, but he grew up in California. He actually played at San Benito High School in Hollister, California his first three years and then went to West Lynn. And hey, one he was recruited by Oregon, but actually Oregon very happy with the freshman quarterback they got, a guy named uh, Justin Wilcox, the younger brother of tight end Josh Wilcox. So he was the most highly recruited quarterback out of the state last year going to Oregon. And an opportunity for it now to answer on the flanker screen, completes the pass to McElroy. McElroy making his way down to the 29-yard line. It'll set up third down and about three to go. Critical juncture for UCLA offensively here. Washington creep back into the game against Ohio State. You mentioned Bobby Hoying, but Damon Ewart, an awful good quarterback for Washington as well. I mean, he has the capabilities of bringing that team back. Third down and three. Third and three is what they're calling it. Terry Donahue drawing on his 20 years of head coaching experience this afternoon. Facing a lot of adversity with injuries. And using a freshman quarterback. The pass is complete for the first down. Kevin Jordan, Mr. Clutch for the Bruins, makes the catch. Yeah, he's been pretty quiet today, but he makes the plays when they need it. Oregon was thinking run. UCLA was in more of a run formation, and they went with the quick throw to Jordan for the first down. Good call by Bob Toledo. Jordan, four receptions today for a total of 26 yards. Needs five more to become UCLA's all-time leading receiver. First down, ball to 33 with 5.04 to play in the game. Bruins trailing by a touchdown. Play action. McNown escapes one would-be tackler and fires incomplete at midfield for Eric Scott. Downstairs to Dean Blevins. Guys, we have an injury uh, that may be significant for Oregon. Cornerback Kenny Wheaton's a very good player, number 20. He has an elbow problem. They have him taped up like a mummy. They don't know if he'll return or not, but right now Lamont Woods, 11, is in on the corner. Uh, UCLA hasn't attacked that corner, but we'll keep an eye on that. Todd, in fairness to number 20, Kenny Wheaton, the injured player, Woods, that guy right there, they don't lose much with him. Another one of the good cover guys. Yeah, he's, a, he's an excellent cover guy, but Kenny Wheaton, very similar to Donnie Edwards and what he means to the UCLA defense, Kenny Wheaton is a guy who makes big plays, as we see Cade McNown needs to take a timeout. UCLA! McNown facing maybe the most pressure-packed situation in his young football career as his coach watches on. The sign says it all. Second down, 10 to go for the Bruins. The ball on their own 33-yard line. It has been a story where they have run the ball well throughout the course of the day. Jabbar going over 100 yards. Skip Hicks with a long touchdown run. His very short appearance. Interesting situation, too. They had the timeout, and on the sideline, they called a play with two tight ends. And as soon as they got in the huddle, they put a third wide receiver in, so they changed the play. And they hand it off to Jabbar, and Jeremy Asher says, Uh uh, I know that one. It'll be third down and long. Jeremy Asher, uh, he's still shaking his head. Well, the key to being a good inside linebacker is to be able to read and react very quickly. And that's what Jeremy Asher does. He reads the play, he diagnoses it, and then he reacts very quickly and flies to the football. And once he gets there, he usually makes good tackles. So that's why he has 18 tackles in a ball game. He reads things, he has great speed getting to the football, and he's a very sure tackler once he gets to the spot. And he has earned some more all-conference votes this afternoon. Third down and 10, McNown. 
has time, has Jordan. First down and then some. Jordan almost broke it. He's brought down to the 29-yard line by the guy they just brought in defensively for Oregon, Lamont Woods, and they went to work on him right away. Well, Lamont Woods is going to be in single coverage. You'd think maybe they'd give him a little help with the safety, but he's bump and run man to man. And you see he's got outside position as if he thinks he has inside help. And Kevin Jordan runs the perfect pattern against that technique. Outside technique, if you're running an inside route, a post route, you've got great position. And that was a perfect throw and catch. McNown to Jordan on that one. And look who's coming back into the game, Wheaton. Taking over his corner spot. They run the counter. Trail reverse to Ayers. We were looking for it, and here it is. McNown leading the way, blocking. The quarterback throws a key block and touchdown UCLA. Derek Ayers for the second time in as many weeks, running the reverse into the end zone. Well conceived play, they're gonna fake the counter trap, they're gonna pull the guard and tackle, and Oregon's gonna read the counter. They give it to the halfback, but it's not the counter, it's the reverse. Now watch the quarterback down leading the play. They lead with the center, and the quarterback gets the key block on Kenny Wheaton, who just came back in the ball game. Big play for the touchdown for UCLA. Cade McNown should take a bow on that play, because he threw the key block near the end of that run to spring airs loose. Did it last week against UCLA, and you said quarterbacks can't block. Take a look at Mr. Tough Guy. We'll be right back. It's 31 apiece. Todd, how many blocks have you thrown like this? Well, I've thrown a few, but you can see Cade McNown gets perfect position on Kenny Wheaton, and Ayers does a nice job there by waiting until the block is made, just kind of holding off and then stepping into the end zone. Good use of his blockers on the sideline, and for the second week in a row, Derek Ayers turns the game around with a reverse. The second touchdown of the afternoon, coming straight out of Compton, California, Derek Ayers. That touchdown was the first points that Oregon has given up in the fourth quarter this year. This is Ricky Whittle. Oh, people are flying around. Whittle upended. <laughs> A little wobbly right now. Glenn Tompkins was there, the backup free safety, to make a hit. Big play on the special teams by Tompkins up and over the top, but fortunately for Whittle, came down fairly softly on his derriere there. Don't want to land that way too often, though. 31 apiece with 3.48 to play. UCLA has responded here in the second half after trailing going into the locker room. This is Jelks, the fullback. Run down after a gain of about two yards. And a look at our Chevrolet players of the game, Tony Graziani for Oregon and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for the UCLA Bruins. But still some valuable plays to be made. You know, Mark, one of the good things for Oregon in this situation, if they get into a two-minute hurry-up type situation, this is a good crowd here today, but because the stadium is so big and the fans are so far away from the field, I don't think noise will be a real factor trying to call the plays and running a two-minute offense. That works in the favor of Oregon here at the end of the ballgame. Play action, Graziani passing complete to Hodge. Hodge has been a key factor for Oregon offensively. He was covered by Teddy Lawrence. But Hodge has made a few key plays that has broken the game over open a little bit today. In celebrating its 25th year of the NC sponsorship, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. Chevy players of the game again from Oregon. It was Graziani and that man Jabbar for UCLA. Dean? Hey guys, on the sideline, Danny O'Neill, last year's star quarterback, was counseling Graziani and asking what he told him. He said it was a horrible feeling after fumbling that snap, but you got to make that transition to come back and make the plays. Riddle Dean with a nice stiff arm to gain about seven yards after the initial contact. Delivered a good uh, Jim Brown style stiff arm to Tommy Bennett that time, breaking a tackle. And they will move the sticks because it's another Oregon first down with 2.51 to play. A 15 yard pickup for Ricky Whittle. 
Good look at Cade McNown again on the sidelines, getting a lot of on-the-job training today here in the Rose Bowl. I mean, he, he's not going to be in any more exciting games than this one. 31-31 with two minutes and 40 seconds left. And he has really held his own. You know, when they took him out there in the first half, they let him calm down and relax. He's played very well in the second half for the Bruins. A good move by the UCLA coaches to let him get a look at things. There's the counter, Whittle. They're going to their main workhorse, Ricky Whittle, who a couple of weeks ago carried the ball 30 times. You know, we mentioned at the top of the show, one of the keys is the special teams. Who would have an advantage or create an advantage in the special teams? And we mentioned Joshua Smith, the freshman kicker for Oregon. He's probably never been in a bigger situation like this. If you have to give someone an edge, it would go to UCLA's Bjorn Merton in terms of having to kick a game-winning field goal at the end of the ball game. UCLA coming with pressure. Graziani looking for McLemore. He's got it. Down at the three-yard line. He's their Mr. Clutch, and he made a nice catch. No question who Graziani was looking for that time. Tony Graziani really froze him with the with the pump fake and watch the move by McLemore. He's been quiet, but he showed up on this play. Little stutter step to the outside and froze Gidry, Javelin Gidry right there and a perfect throw over the shoulder by Tony Graziani. What a perfectly set up play. Sometimes a receiver gets in a hurry to make that fake. He doesn't really let the guy bite on it, but McLemore, a great sense of timing on that play. Gave him the outside little head fake and stutter step and ran right by him for the big play. That had to be jelly because Jam doesn't shake like that. McLemore with a great move. And here's Ricky Whittle down to the three-yard line with 1-12 to play in the game. I think a critical thing right here for Oregon also is they've got to make sure that Kyle Strait makes good snaps here inside the five-yard line because with the goal line defense coming in for UCLA, they'll put somebody right over the nose, right over the nose of the center, and he's got to make sure he makes a good snap first and foremost because you don't want to bobble the snap in here when you're running your goal line off. And the reason we bring that up is because Greg Mark, pardon me, Mark Greg, the starting center is now in his street clothes. He was injured in the first half and straight came in and has filled that role since that time. There's a look at the place kicker we were talking about moments ago, Joshua Smith from Colorado Springs, Colorado. As we mentioned, hey, he was sitting down watching The Simpsons or something or maybe a little Monday night football when he got the call from the coaching staff at Oregon. You see why he's smiling? You know why he's smiling right there? Because he knows with the ball on the five-yard line, he's got a real good chance of only having to kick an extra point and not a field goal. Uh, that's why he's got a big smile. They were out on around the 25-yard line with a minute 10. He'd be pacing up and down and kicking have a very into the pensive, net. Yeah. Uh, kicking into the net with a pensive look. But, but with the ball inside the five, he's saying, man, I think I can make the extra point. And the key play once again was made by Kristen Mackley this week was suffering from a staph infection in his knee, but hey, the knee looked good on this play. Well, McLemore did his part. Now watch Graziani, the pump fake, that helped to freeze the defender, and then McLemore runs right by him, and you can't make that throw any better than Graziani did. That 42-yard play set the table for Oregon, who now has the ball on the three. The waggle, Graziani still looking almost picked off a dangerous throw by Graziani. <laughs> Didn't use good, good judgment that time. He was looking for Wilcox, and it's third down and goal with 106 to play. Wokey breaking it up. Graziani, 18 of 34 today for 252 yards and one touchdown pass. Take a look at Graziani now. He's pretty much made good decisions. He does a nice job eluding the pressure right here, but anytime you're rolling one way and try to throw it back the other way, you're throwing it right back to where all the defenders are, and he's very lucky that something bad didn't happen to him right there. Here we go. Ball on the three and a half, third and goal. Watch for a little pick play here. You got two receivers out to the wide, a little pick play coming to this side of the field. McLemore in the slot. They look for McLemore. Who else did you think was going to get it? Touchdown, Oregon. <laughs> Staff infection or not, his infection is the bane of UCLA. 
Well, you, they had the pick play. The inside receiver broke to the outside. The outside receiver picked off the defender. McLemore makes the catch, one foot down. A great athletic catch and getting his foot down by Kristen McLemore. When they needed him to show up, he shows up and makes two great plays. It's almost as if McLemore was saying, guys, just call me when you need me. With great athletic background in his family, too, his Uncle Mark plays for the California Angels. Fourth on Oregon's all-time receiving list, and a big play here. Everybody runs their version of the pick play. When they brought the two wide receivers out there, they got a nice pick on the inside coverage. Abdul McCullough was late getting out off the pick to make the play, and a nice throw and catch. Graziani to McLemore. And again, not to take anything away from UCLA, but there is something special about this Oregon team. The battle back, they've done it all season. They've had to play catch up in, in their first two wins against Utah. Against Illinois, they were behind 31 to 20 at one point in that ball game in the second half last week, and came back to win 34-31. And uh, whenever they've had to respond, when UCLA has challenged them and, and come after them, they have they have responded and answered every time. Nice That's shot it. there, Danny. Yeah. The, yeah. the past and the present of Oregon football, huh? Yeah. And right now, the present is looking pretty good for the Ducks. McLemore with five receptions today for 63 yards and a touchdown catcher. Can we change that Chevy MVP? <laughs> with no, with no, not that we want to diss Graziani because he was a real monument to poise on that last drive, too. You know, more on McLemore, you know, more on McLemore. He, he missed some practice time this week because of the staph infection in his knee. But in addition to that, he hurt his back in the preseason lifting weights and, and didn't start the first two games. So even though he's their go-to receiver, he has yet to start a game this year for Oregon. He's battled injuries pretty much his whole career. But when he's healthy, he's as good a receiver as there is in the Pac-10. He's a guy who, who just makes big plays. His only problem has been he, he's had a lot of trouble staying healthy for a whole season. Five receptions this week for 63, as I mentioned. Last week, five receptions for 147 yards against Illinois. You know, when you're around this Oregon team, the coaches, the players, players, the fans, you just get the feeling that they count on the big play, the clutch play, when they need it. It's interesting. When we were at UCLA's practice on, on Thursday, I noticed something. They had a big sign on their practice field on the fence that said, players make plays. We have seen a, a fine testament to that today on both sides of the field. Great players make great plays when you need them. This is McLemore. He needs to get out of bounds, and he does at the 17-yard line. And for Oregon's coach, Rich Bellotti, pardon me, Mike Bellotti, or... <laughs> Boy, you know, you can't think of a better script for him in his opening, Pac-10 opening. Only one coach, Tex Oliver, in 1938, has defeated UCLA in their rookie season. Well, he succeeds Rich Brooks, who, by the way, is off to a great start as the Rams coach. His team is undefeated at 2-0 as well. But uh, as you mentioned, a great start for Mike Bellotti. Now, UCLA, they had a penalty on the return, so that sets him back inside the 10. And, and worse than that, with 57 seconds left in the ballgame, they only have one timeout left. Cade McNown had to use a couple of timeouts earlier in the, in the half, and so they're, they're down to one timeout with 95 yards to go. I'm not even sure that the old Skip Hicks surprise play will work here. McNown gets it to Jabbar in the flat, and he's pushed out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Oregon on the verge of improving to 3-0 on the season and 1-0 in the always tough Pac-10. And an interesting thing about Oregon and, and why they have a real good chance to repeat this year, they don't play USC. They, they, every team in the conference takes a two-year hiatus. That's why they haven't played UCLA for two seasons. Well, this year, it's USC that doesn't show up on Oregon's schedule. So this is a, a huge stepping stone for the Oregon Ducks. But now going downtown, has a man at midfield complete at the 48. That stops the clock with 44 seconds to go. Don't go anywhere. McNown made a great throw under pressure. He was being sacked as he made this throw and still showed the strength of his arm to get the ball all the way down the field. Now, they're able to save their timeout because in college football, the clock stops until they set the chain so they can hold on to that timeout for as long as they need it. A 37-yard pickup by Derek Ayers on the catch. McNown 
Looking up top again, double coverage. It's complete. Oh, do you believe that? Kevin Jordan. The ball's at the three with 33 seconds to go. What a perfect throw by Cade McNown against double coverage. They've been double covering Kevin Jordan for most of the afternoon. McNown puts this ball right on the money. Look at it. In between two defenders, there's only one place that ball can go for a completion, and it went to the right spot. In between double coverage, Lamont Woods beaten again on the play. The clock running with 28 seconds to play. The ball on the three-yard line. UCLA with one timeout remaining. Backs out of the eye. They run the option. The freshman is stopped up at about the two-yard line. They're going to call timeout now. They've got to use the timeout here with 12 seconds left. They trail by a touchdown, 38 to 31. But two big plays, one by Ayers and one by Jordan, 37 and 46 yards respectively to set the table. And McNown has really not thrown the ball much at all in the second half. But when he's had to make the throws, you can't make two better throws than that. Watch two plays ago. OK, this is the first pass. Watch the perfect throw that McNown makes here under pressure. He's going to get hit as he throws it and still makes the perfect over the shoulder throw for the big play, beating the man to man coverage in the blitz. I mean, two great throws in a row by Cade McNown, 37 yards and 46 yards, and, and now they're knocking on the door. And of course, we saw McLemore for Oregon. Here we see Jordan, the other big play receiver. Jordan picking up 46 on this one. Okay, here's the situation now with second down and two. You can either run a play action pass or some kind of throw where you throw it in the end zone. If it's incomplete, you stop the clock. Or you can run a running play, and if you don't get in, you've got to line your team up and kill the clock. And you can do that in college football now. UCLA lining up in a shotgun situation in Oregon. After seeing the formation, they call the timeout. Dean Blevins, what's up on the field? Well, offensive coordinator Bob Toledo and Terry Donahue in the middle of the huddle, of course, with the squad a moment ago. And Terry spent his time talking to his rookie quarterback, trying to keep him calm down and telling him that there were two plays. So don't get carried away with the fact that there are no timeouts and time's running down as Toledo was talking about moving the ball from hash mark to hash mark. And I'll try to eavesdrop again if I don't get kicked out. <laughs> you know, Dean, they have a great two-minute play that we watched them work on Thursday. If right. they get into that situation, it's a four-wide receiver set with the shotgun, and they run the quarterback on a quarterback trap behind Jonathan Ogden. The interesting question now is do they use that play right now and try to score the touchdown with it, or do they save it and, and use it for the two-point play in the win? Well, that's exactly what Bob Toledo and Terry Donahue are probably thinking through right now. They're mulling that over. 12 seconds to play UCLA boy when it looked like they were really out of it you know there was a penalty after the kickoff that set the ball back to inside their own five yard line three wideouts McNown rolling out into the end zone incomplete it'll be third down and goal Good pressure that time by Troy Bailey, number 56. He forced the errant throw. A little tough when you're a left-handed quarterback to roll out to the right and make that throw. Good pressure that time by Troy Bailey. I think if UCLA scores, they'll go for two. I think they'll go for the win, even though they've got a freshman quarterback. That They worked on that two-point play several times, probably about a half a dozen times against every different look they could expect from the Oregon defense. It's a well-designed play. Ayers coming into the game. He sets up slot right. He has two touchdowns already today. They run the pick play, and they throw to Jabbar out of the backfield, incomplete, stopping the clock with four seconds to go. They're down to one play now, fourth and two, and they really have not looked good on those last two plays. Mark, I really will not be surprised if they go to that two-point play right now and, and use the quarterback trap because they have not been able to get a good-looking throw on the last two plays. Hey, when you've got Jonathan Ogden and all of his 6'8", 305 pounds, why not use it? Might be option. Quarterback is under the center. This is it. They hand it off to Jabbar. Can he get there? Did he get there? No signal. That's it. It's over. Oregon's defense responds, and they shut down UCLA to win the ball game. What an ending.
They ran to the left side, the strength of their formation, and didn't make it. Well, they went behind their horse. Jonathan Ogden in the left guard, Christensen, and a great play right by the goal line. That's the nose tackle, Desmond Bird, number 99, who flowed down the line of scrimmage and made the play. Watch the play at the end. Lamont Woods, number 11, the cornerback who had given up a couple plays. He was there to make the first stick. Excellent team defense by Oregon at the end of the play. Desmond Bird, Jaya Figueres, both in there on the play. So symbolic of the Oregon Ducks. Gang Green, that is their signature. And they won the game just that way. Mutual respect from both sides. Oregon winning a thriller in the Pac-10 debut of their head coach, Bilotti.